At one point in my life, I thought I would be dead by now. Baby girl, you can't fill someone else's cup without having yours full. Damn, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I had nothing to lose and everything to gain. Yes. So I networked like crazy. I studied like crazy. And I might get cancelled for this. But um, you don't need to meditate for two hours in the morning. You don't need to meditate two hours in the evening. No, I manifested that shit. And now I'm living it. In be delusional. Be more you delusional. You have to be delusional. <laughs> what was growing up like? Like, you literally learn more in six months of running a business and being on social media than three years of a university degree. They're not teaching us how to be self-sufficient. They're teaching us how to work for someone else. That realization really hurt me and it's pissed me off. I just want to be happy, man. Mm. Should we talk about that? Yes. Hello, Lara. Hi. It's so good to have you on the podcast. I'm, I'm so, excited. so excited to be here. Same. First of all, I feel like I've got to congratulate you on the feature in Forbes magazine. Thank you. I can't believe it. What happened. an amazing thing like to achieve. I know. I know. Crazy. You, you said it was on like your bucket list, right? It was literally on my the first thing on my list, like manifestation list I had. So it's crazy how it came true. Like I can't believe that. Hundred percent. We'll have to get into that a little bit later in the episode. But first, I've I've been following following you on LinkedIn for a while now. Um, um, and your growth on that platform has been amazing and you've built a really strong in, like brand around integrity and empowerment and also a lot of value. Thank you. But first of all, I want to go all the way back to growing up because I feel like I don't know you as a person yet. And hopefully this episode will help people <laughs> um, see you in a different light as well. So what was growing up like? Growing up like, uh, I guess it was crazy. I think the best way for me to phrase this in growing up as a teenager I booked a one-way ticket to England, uh, 5,000 miles away from home, from Mexico to the UK. And I packed a large suitcase, I changed my SIM, and I never looked back. And I think that single decision I made was the catalyst for everything that's happened to me now. The girl that you see today isn't the girl that I was when I was 15. Obviously, we changed a lot, but my life completely transformed into something so magical and beautiful in the UK. So I am the UK's biggest fan. <laughs> uh, I came here to be in boarding school, actually. No one knows about, no one knows this about me. And I've been studying here ever since and currently I'm doing my master's on top of a business, so yeah. yeah. Again, that's something we need to get into, studying and running a very successful business. But what at what age were you when you moved to the UK? 15. I was, 15? I was that's, only a baby, yeah. That's insane. So you moved for, for school, so was that like at sixth form college? GCSEs. GCSEs. Yeah, I did all my GCSEs here, my A-levels, my undergrad, and then my master's. So I've been in the education system for a really long time. Yeah, what what did you study? What are your like? Uh, my A-levels, my GCSEs and A-levels were like similar, business, English, maths, um, Spanish. Spanish. Which I failed, by the way, so <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, that, that was it. And then for university, I did business studies, on international business studies, and then my master's is digital marketing. Mm -hmm, love that. So are you in your final year now? Uh, yeah, my final year for master's, so a couple of months ago, and then I'll Cool, how's, how's that been? How have you found the like education system? <sighs> um, honestly, it's, it's so bittersweet, because growing up, everything we thought that would make us successful would be that piece of paper uh, that we had. And it's, the reality is not, no one's ever asked me what I got on my GCSEs. No one's ever asked me what I got on my A-levels. No one's ever asked me what I got on my undergrad, ever. What they do ask me, what qualifications do you have? Like what, what's, what, not qualifications, but what, what have you done? What can you show us? What are your actual skills? Um, how, how are you? Like people care more about how you are as a person than what you got on a grade, like on your mm -hmm. GCSEs. And I think that realization really hurt me and it's pissed me off big time because during my GCSEs and my A-levels, I developed really bad anxiety and depression because they were constantly pushing us to study so hard and make it make it everything so perfect. And it was the be all end all. Uh, they're all going to ask you about your A levels when you grow up. There's this and that. And when you got to when I got to uni, no one gave a shit. Mm -hmm. No one asked me anything. Like nothing mattered. Just the person that I was mattered. Mm -hmm. Not everything else was just like an add on. So 
I have beef with the, I guess, lower, like GCCA level education system because the way they made us feel isn't, isn't worth it. They shouted at us, they make us feel so stupid. One time at school, they actually put us all in a, in a, in a classroom and they were like, you guys are the worst. Like you need to get your shit together uh, because you're, you're our worst performing year. And I, they were shouting at us, like, we were only like 17, 18. Yeah. That was traumatizing and it just really set the tone for that year for me. I had panic attacks like, right, right, left, right and center. And no kid should ever be experiencing panic attacks because of an exam. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it's really interesting you say that because we had Sophie Miller on a previous episode and we had this like similar discussion talking about how the education system is set up to kind of tick certain boxes and you tick one box, GCSEs, then you move to the next one, right? Once you've got your A-levels, you tick that and it's like back at square one because you're doing a degree and it's almost like this cycle that never really ends but you're promised so much at the end of it you're promised a career success financial independence and that's not necessarily how it works especially with the turbulence of the economy today how saturated the graduate job market actually is and i found there's so many so much missed opportunity I, I i think about all that talent that could have been invested into like young entrepreneurs or people doing apprenticeships or v- vocational subjects and really just like following what what lights them up and what fires them up but instead they think i need to do the, these types of degrees at these universities because these are according to a list that was published last year the best places to go that are going to set you up for life so it's really refreshing to hear you talk about the education system in that way you know there's definitely benefits to it of course um the independence of social skills you get from university and it does open doors at the moment but I think there's a lot of work to be done. Would you it, agree? I think so. And um, I just, it's crazy how, I'll, I'll tell you a story. So in one of my classes recently at the start of the year, uh, they opened a lesson where it, the, the lecturer said, if you know AI, you'll get every single job. And I literally wanted to scream because that was such a, 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 such a bad statement to make like no no it's not like I've tried to apply for jobs so many times I've gotten rejected hundreds of times because I had all the skills I had all the experience I've, I have like technically eight years of marketing experience that didn't matter to them so telling someone that knowing AI would give them jobs like everybody was is going to beg you for a job it's a damn rap, crazy statement to make and this is a problem and also at school, like at uni, they are making us make assignments f- with getting a job in mind. And it really upset me because they're not teaching us how to be self-sufficient. Mm. They're teaching us how to work for someone else. And that is so wrong because in this economy, as you said, the best way to grow is to be an entrepreneur. And if you're not actually, bu- you don't have to build a big business. It doesn't have to be a massive corporation. You could, be, you could just be a freelancer and like make money on the side. And they're just kind of like indoctrinating us to stay in our lane, like stay in a single lane where you get a job, then it's a nine to five, uh, go home, repeat again, uh, work for someone else, make someone else money. That, no one deserves that life we all have access to the internet where we can learn so much and monetize ourselves so it's been it's been so bittersweet i always wanted to be have a master's because you know first generation latina um first one to have like a uk british degree uh like no like besides my dad and it's it's just like i don't know if i even want it anymore like Mm. yeah it's really interesting because i bet if you asked yourself that two three years ago you wouldn't have thought that way but then the exposure to the business world and i think also an element of privilege comes into this and maybe both of us didn't have that when we were kind of starting out but i see a lot of business owners today and the way they just talk about their their growing up and their childhood and their um like ambitions career-wise is so different to 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 my own experience myself because I never thought of like entrepreneurship being a viable career path when I was like 16 17 like I had no business network I didn't have anyone in the family who'd started their own business and and today I see a lot of people who have that and you really my eyes have really been open to that gap in privilege and access to opportunities but also to networks as well yeah I agree and I think congratulations vastly for doing all of this I don't think you're giving yourself enough credit for that I I really admire everything that you've done and I see you growing (laughs) yes thank you but uh yeah I agree I think I also come from a 
really strong place from privilege and uh, I, I need to say that because I went to private school in the UK from Mexico. So I have that, but at the same time, I grew in a place where we don't have the same access to anything in Mexico. Like you, the, even the NHS to me is amazing. Like it's free, like they take care of you, et cetera. And I just see that like, this place is amazing. Everybody wants to live, but the UK for me is, has given me so many opportunities and um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Love that. So how did you then get from like your edu your degree and then t t to where you are today. I want to like break that down into kind of chunks so people can begin to see like the growth and what you did at each step. So where the hell did it, how did it start? Yeah, so how did you start? Did you, did you know what you wanted to do when you started your degree like career-wise? Actually, I promised myself I'd never be an entrepreneur. Really? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so now I am. My Both my parents are entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. my, my dad is. <clears throat> and I would always see him as a child working those 18 hour days, uh, always on his phone. He had like three work phones, always working, a true workaholic. And my mom, so, so is my mom. So I promised myself, no, I'll never be this person. Fuck the shit. I want to have a normal job, nine to five, live in like cute house. I wanted to be an investment banker actually. And just like live that life. And I was like, perfect. And then I kept on getting rejected for every, everywhere I, I applied to. Um, rejections here, rejections there, KPMG, JP Morgan, whatever. Couldn't get anywhere. So I was like, now what? <laughs> Look at you now though. Look at you now. <laughs> um, now what? So props to you. But so, so, so yeah, you struggle to get a lot of jobs. I think that's a story for a lot of young people. They will definitely relate to that. Um, I think I applied for like 60, 70 grad schemes yeah. and immediately got rejected by like 35 or 40. Immediately like as immediately. well. Immediately, not even like it's so an stressful. opportunity. It's just based on a CV. And I'm like, God, there must be so many applicants as well for each job role. So statistically, yeah. your chances are so slim. So yeah, sorry, continue the story. So yeah, for me, and I had that experience and I had it worse because um, they prioritize UK applicants, then EU applicants and then international applicants. Right. So I was like at the bottom of the pile for everything. Mm -hmm. So I felt like I, I wasn't good enough and that feeling is really hard to shake off. Mm -hmm. So um, I remember I had to go back to Mexico because of the pandemic, COVID had just hit. And I went back home for like a holiday just to see my parents. And it turned into this massive worldwide pandemic. And I was like, okay, I can't go back to you any anywhere. So I spent the next year and a half, two years at home, unemployed, with not, without my friends, sad, almost depressed. And nothing was working. I didn't want to get a, a job in the, in Mexico because I always want, I want to live here forever. So, I was like, okay, I'm gonna apply for a master's and hopefully I'll go back and do, then go back and scale and do the employment route again, apply to grad schemes. And then I realized, okay, I need to go on LinkedIn and maybe ask for some references. Mm -hmm. And that single decision changed everything for me and I didn't know. I didn't know. I was only looking for references. I had only I had deleted my LinkedIn account because I hated it. It was filled with my ex, uh, my mm -hmm. friends that had just been getting promoted, my ex that just got like the best job ever. Uh, I'm so happy and grateful to announce that that yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was like I'm tired it's making me feel like shit no no social media platform is going to humble you faster than LinkedIn when you don't have connections mm. so I was humbled I was like I'm out and then I was like okay, I'm gonna start again hopefully get some references for uni and then go out and then I was like okay I'm gonna try and make this look nice while I'm at it so I watched a quick Gary Vee keynote speech for an hour uh learned as much as I could and started posting and then I found you Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I found you, Sophie Miller, Izzy Pryor on LinkedIn. I was like, this kid's not cool. Like they're posting some good, some good stuff. Cause there's see that uh, you start off on LinkedIn, like seeing like all the bros, all the really boring stuff, yeah. like all the news and you're like, oh. And then I saw you, Sophie Miller, Izzy Pryor talking about sh stuff that I actually, I was like, oh, this is good. Oh, I love that. And I didn't know I played, I played a role yeah, in this. Yeah, you <laughs> played a big role in like me starting out and your content, I was like, this is, I could write this, you know? It's like, it doesn't seem like I need to have like this incredible experience. Mm -hmm. I could just write about my life. And yeah. everything changed. I committed to posting on LinkedIn for every day for the last like three months. Uh, 
making calls, uh, networking calls with people for every every single day. I had nothing to do. I had nothing to lose and everything to gain. Yes. So I, I networked like crazy. I studied like crazy. And a year and 12, 12 months later, we're here. LinkedIn is the place to be right now. And if you're serious about scaling your personal brand, then Taplio is your new best friend. Taplio is the first all-in-one LinkedIn tool that allows you to create high-performing content, schedule your posts, analyze performance, and engage with others. Taplio are kindly offering all listeners of this podcast one month subscription for only, wait for it, one dollar. Literally, one dollar. To find out more, click the link in the bio and use code REBELSPODCAST in capitals to claim the offer. How many followers do you have now? I have uh, 62k. Okay, and, and th that's impressive. But also the speed of growth, I think, is like really impressive. Yeah. Um, and partly like why you're featured in in Forbes because you've seemed to have hacked the 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 growth aspect. Yeah. Um. So, well, firstly, actually, how fast did you grow? How long has it took you to build that so, 60k following? I think there's a really popular quote and it's like your first 10k are the hardest for anything. Yes. Followers, money, anything. And it was, I was growing really, really slowly. Well, actually, I lie. I went viral on my first LinkedIn post. <laughs> it actually exploded. It got 4k likes uh, in like two days. So that really catapulted me into actually being like, okay, there's a place for me mm -hmm. here. Uh, yeah. It gave me organic Instagram vibes 2015 where the algorithm was nice and healthy and lovely so i was like, i need to be here and then everything else i was like trying to put out content trying to engage everything else so it took me about six months to get no two three months to get my first 10k so it was quite slow mm. 20k was also slow but then w once i hit like about 30k everything just changed and it wasn't because of the number it was just because i understood the linkedin game where it's like you put high quality content out you engage and you have a really solid network so for the, those first six three to six months i was working on building my reputation mm -hmm. working on understanding the basic rules of copywriting and getting my name out there like trying to chat to, to as many people as i could and the way you do that is through engaging on people's comments i was engaging on your comments i was engaging on sophie miller's comments i was trying to be as valuable as I could mm -hmm. even though I, I didn't know much I just did my best and that's the that's the thing that people miss is like you don't have to be an expert you just have to be a someone that wants to be there that's mm -hmm. it you don't need anything else presence and visibility I say at the beginning are just so important yeah more so than even like providing you know, expert level value because that takes time that takes time to understand like you said the art of copy um the ability to um, build that, that like high quality network first you've got to kind of just put yourself out there engage with people like you said be part of the community be a voice that people see and know of and once you've built that kind of brand presence people start listening yes and I think this is so much that g goes in, into it I think one thing that's really important is a quote I don't know who said it but I saw a post on it on LinkedIn and it said it's not just what you say it's also who says it that matters and so you could have somebody who has built no kind of brand presence or authority say something amazing crickets nobody nobody listens to it nobody hears it nobody takes that advice nobody engages you can have somebody who's been building a brand over time engaging every day on the, on a social media platform putting out great content and then sharing that and suddenly you have the viral content right yeah. so it's also really important of like the person behind the brand which is why i always say the personal brand should be you know, should showcase your personal as well as just the brand and the value that you're given yeah personal branding goes beyond just the content and people don't understand that people yeah. it's like linkedin okay just content but it's not i think there's like pillars to it is like you have to have outstanding content you have to have a really valuable network you have to have um a very engaged audience and then you have to have social proof mm. those three th like four things change the game for you and you have to collect them over time and it takes time 100 percent. i remember last year like we the first time we met, I think, was at an, was it Sophie Miller's event? Yes. Um, so again, that's another great example of 
building a personal brand but outside of a social media platform like actually meeting people in person going to these like networking events and conferences or wh whatever your vibe is for me personally i don't like formal networking events and i've never been to one at least in the last two years but i love kind of more social gatherings mm -hmm. where you have people in more relaxed environments just like networking making friends you know people aren't going in expecting something or trying to sell something for me that's like my you safe make a really space. good point there because <laughs> People don't get this, but you actually want to be friends with people that you meet. Yeah. Where people go wrong is that they come into social media wanting to build this magnetic personal brand, but they forget that you need to actually come from a place of abundance mm. and love and actually wanted to help people. Uh, not from a place of I want these leads, I want this money, I want your money. Yeah. Um, I want to talk to you just because it's self-serving for me. Mm. There's so many people who go wrong with that and I can smell that shit really quick mm. with people and probably everyone can. So the number one personal branding advice I think is just be selfless. Give out as much as you want, uh, as much as it feels right for you, expecting nothing in return and it will come back to you. But yeah it's just about that friendship and that building that i think that's so important actually because also with the friendship aspect if you're brushing shoulders with other key people in your space in your industry the learning opportunity there is actually insane like you take away the the monetization aspect of, of whatever you're selling your service your product but also the ability to learn and like accelerate your growth as a person through surrounding yourself with that kind of high net worth network is like insane the, yeah. the, the amount of stuff that i've learned from other creators on social media and meeting them in person and having those yes. conversations far out outweighs any course i've done my degree any blog i've read just like raw authentic conversations nothing beats that in my opinion you literally learn more in six months of running a business and being on social media than three years of a uh, university degree i stand by that hundred a hundred percent mm -hmm. like totally totally agree um we'll get back we'll come back to some more kind of actionable tips for people because i know a lot of people will watch this episode for that but i want to go just talk a little bit about more about your journey um because you're really into fitness as well right oh my god yes so let's talk about it you know what i don't talk about this enough but uh i am a full-time powerlifter i'm a full-time business owner i'm a full-time 20 year old and i'm also a full-time student student full-time master student uh and I don't think people realize that. Um, I love it. Is that I? It drives me. It gives me purpose. Mm -hmm. Powerlifting has taught me so much about life and business and my personality. Before it, I was incredibly shy. I didn't know my standing. I didn't know what to do. And then the discipline that comes with practicing practicing a sport every single day, eating healthy, waking up, doing things for yourself. Um, it just amplifies everything you do in life, uh, especially now in business. Everything, every big lesson that I have for business, I learned at the gym. Um, mm. I think every single person should take on a sport and be committed to it because it clears your mind, it makes you healthy outside and also makes you healthy inside. Yeah. I love that. It's also great for like habit building. It is. Um, and so so how, how and why powerlifting? <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's crazy actually so i had this boyfriend at uni uh we'd been going well for, since like a levels and he started getting into powerlifting and i was like oh, what the hell is powerlifting and out of all in all every single conversation that we had for like that month it was about squats bench deadlift he was deadlifting in like the middle of the kitchen like i was like what is this so i was like i'm either gonna dump this guy or i'm going to have to join him <laughs> And I ended up joining him and it completely changed my life. That sport is so beautiful. Coming as a woman as well, uh, we're taught to shrink ourselves. We're taught to be quiet. We're taught to that we shouldn't be a strong uh, woman, shouldn't be bulky, all of that. And um, I, had a, I was struggling with an eating disorder as well, on and off. And powerlifting gave me the strength to stand up for myself, to know that food is fuel. And I could eat as much as I could. I wanted to because I could use that as fuel to empower myself at the gym and lift mm. extraordinary weights. Like I'm a 52 kilo girl. I lift 140 kilos. What if anyone has anything to do or to say to me? I'm like, no. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I love that energy. Yeah, I, I, it's just it's giving me the confidence I never thought I could have, and I'm just constantly just so empowered by my own strength. 
and I think mm. it's so beautiful. I love that. And also, I think in like British culture, like to say something like that is like almost like stigmatized yeah. and just having that like level of self-confidence and I always say to people like, I also have a similar thing where I describe my level of confidence as like delusional like in, in, in be delusional be more you delusional. have to be delusional <laughs> any anyone I know that's at our level of success yeah. at our age has to have been delusional as fuck to really be here because you have to believe it even if it's not there you just have to believe it and it will happen yeah and you have to surround yourself with delusional people just be crazy oh, absolutely i totally agree so this a takeaway message from this episode be, be more delusional, delusional. <laughs> yes it, it works as well and also just like not only for the confidence for your, for yourself but also just being delusional almost like a manifestation trick where you you say you want to do something and it happens yes it literally like yes it, it, it does work <laughs> have you had a similar experience I, I i've literally manifested my entire life and i that's just because i'm delusional as fuck <laughs> when I was younger, I was so bullied when I was younger that I had to make this shelter for myself. And it's going to get a little bit sad, but I made this shelter for myself where I was just constantly daydreaming because my current life was so sad and I was so depressed and I had to pretend my life was different in my head. So I was thinking about when I would live in London, I have, I've been boarding school, uh, wearing those uniforms. Uh, maybe someday I'll run my own business. One day I'll be strong and powerful and I'll be like one of those girls that I used to look at on the TV um, speaking on podcasts or whatever when I and dressing like the way I dress now and being having a British accent having dated the guys I've dated or um, even running on a, a business I manifested that shit and now I'm living it and because I was delusional as fuck like everyone's like no Lara that's not gonna happen like stop daydreaming stop writing on your little diary and I was like no, and I just kept doing my shit, foc focused, uh, had like a little, you know, I could, six ag, couldn't, couldn't, couldn't get there, but uh, I'm here now. And that was because of illusion, manifestation that. works. Showing up and not dimming your light and also not letting your hurt child make decisions for your adult self. Yes. That's so important. Yeah, I, I love that because everything I do is for her, my inner child that was so wounded uh, I am now protecting her for from everything. Everything I do is to protect her, to be, make her proud, to make her feel accepted, to make her feel loved. So every like all the love that I have comes from her. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that. I love that. No one's ever said something like that on this podcast. I think it's really profound, actually, as well. Um, and and yeah, so. so just to go back a little bit, you said you were bullied quite a lot at school and yeah. so it was in the form of escapism. Um, what was that like? It was it was really tough. I was always bullied ever since. I actually can't remember quite a lot of my childhood because trauma then like shuts down your memory. So I can't really remember it a lot, but it was extreme. I was bullied every single day, um, one way or another, either like people were tying me up on a tube and pulling my trousers down and putting sand and like dead bees inside my trousers and then just leaving me there. I think that was that was like a point where I was like, what is life? And um, oh my God. it was really bad. And I was like really shy. I thought no one liked me. I thought I was ugly. Like actually, and I, I think you might like this. I'd never experienced racism in the UK, but I experienced racism in Mexico. Mm. Um, I was extremely bullied for my skin color at Mexican school, and it was it was insane. I couldn't believe it, and I felt ugly. Um, I and it, it I was really shy, but now we're here. Uh, I've got. I, I think I'm so grateful actually that I got bullied because that pain I turned it into magic and all my strength that I have today. So as a true female, uh, empowered woman, magical, mystical being, I turned my pain and I alchemized it into all the strength that I have today. So it was character building, but I I couldn't be more grateful for it now. I'm generally like sat here feeling quite inspired <laughs> by just what you're saying. <laughs> um, so I'm sure listeners will, will feel the same. It's just amazing to, to see somebody who's so happy and, and successful and empowered and confident in themselves because it's always a thing of like you're always you don't want to be seen as like too confident because you're arrogant or cocky or and these labels are put on people so people shrink themselves and they, and, and they dim their light because they don't want to be they don't want to rock the boat they don't want to stand out they don't want to make things about them and you're not doing that but 
what, what you are doing is creating more space for growth in yourself by allowing yourself to know your worth mm-hmm. you're opening the more opportunities to, you know you're, you're, you're helping your, your future self become even more comfortable even more successful yeah and i think you do that too like beautifully so also that i'm always inspired by everything oh, you say but, um, <laughs> i think confidence true confidence comes from a place of abundance you can mm. people can be confident but it can be fake and you can see it my confidence i know is not cocky because i'm only talking about myself and not the money i'm making or um, all the clients i have or this isn't that i'm talking about my self growth mm. and that's the thing that empowers me the most i'm happy i'm fulfilled i'm abundant truthfully in the friends that i have yeah. in the experiences i lived and the things that i'm doing that i never thought i could because at one point in my life i thought i would be dead by now so every single day that I live, it's extra, it's a given, it's a, it's a gift from the universe to me because I decided to stay. I've looked death right in the face so many times and I said, you know what, not today. So uh, everything everything else that I have is a blessing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Fucking hell, I love that. Damn, you're good. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) This podcast is proudly sponsored by Fabric, a marketing training academy that runs a world-leading master strategy program for marketers looking to excel in their careers. The program teaches you frameworks that have been used by global brands and coaches you how to build a live marketing strategy in just 12 weeks. Now, I personally know many people who have completed Fabric's program and who have benefited directly from getting promotions and accessing dream job roles to access and increase marketing budgets and gaining the confidence to excel in their careers. Fabric is kindly offering listeners of this podcast 10% off their program so you can secure your place on it. For more information, check out the link in the bio. Use code REBELS10 in all capitals to claim the offer. Um, let's go into, because um, a lot of people know you on LinkedIn for like the growth of your account and, and what you do so tell people who might not know what do you actually do day to day what is your business i, I don't know <laughs> <laughs> no so my business is a linkedin personal branding agency uh we work with founders ceos uh even entrepreneurs and creators to build a personal brand on linkedin purely i don't do instagram tiktok or facebook or anything else just because i feel like linkedin is where it's at right now the organic power of it mm-hmm. is beautiful um i also chose it because you get judged on the right things and that's your intellect mm. not your looks i will say well i'll get into this later but basically that is basically what we do we do copywriting for them we do the strategy for them we create this I get the brand that I, they want to be known for mm-hmm. and then craft it online, post copy re- relating to that and their experiences, give them personality online because as you know, it's very different to just post things and then post stuff with intent. Like what mm-hmm. is this today? Is it inspiring? Is it entertaining someone? Is it educating them? Is it all three? So yeah, that's what we do. Mm-hmm. Killing it. And um, also aside from that, you're also like a, a content creator in your own right as well. Yes. <laughs> And not not just on LinkedIn as well. You're creating content on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, right? Yeah, I actually got my start off as anything on Instagram. I started off as an Instagram influencer. I have 40K followers on TikTok, uh, 30K on Instagram. But I ghosted Instagram and TikTok because those platforms are so vain and they broke me into pieces. So then I found LinkedIn and I was like, I'm at least in this platform, I'm getting judged for my intellect and my expertise. Mm not on my looks Mm -hmm. for somebody who is kind of fairly new or to the platform um and wants to grow presence and build brand for whatever reason that might be to um try and attract um like a promotion or or be headhunted by the the top company or whether it's to start a business convert the side hustle into a full-time thing whatever the objective is what advice practically would you give to somebody who wants to build on LinkedIn? So I say how to get on the top 1% of LinkedIn. Find a topic that you want to talk about. Find sub topics that suit it. Um, create every single day. Engage every single mm. day. Network every single day. And repeat. Yeah. That's it. It's so simple. But everybody overcomplicates it. Complicates it. Stop overcomplicating LinkedIn. And stop overcomplicating your success. The... 80% of success is just 
in the consistency and showing up every day. That's it's it. It's action. It's action and yep. execution, right? Literally. I always say this, that like you can sit there all day fucking long, like planning, strategizing, studying everything. But unless you actually take action, nothing's going to happen. No movement is going to occur. Yeah. So I think it's very important, you know, like you, you, you study the platform, you study other creators. And I know you say this quite a lot as well to, you don't have to rush out and, and take action immediately, but don't sit back for too long because the opportunity is going to, it's going to go. And LinkedIn, as we know, is dependent on an algorithm mm-hmm. right now. You mentioned the organic reach is beautiful. It's amazing right now to grow on that platform, but it's not going to be that good forever yeah. because if more creators come onto the platform and create exactly. content. It gets you know it becomes smaller and it already has been i don't know if yeah you know, I, f- the, I feel that as well it has been as well um in the in the last year so now is like a perfect opportunity um so to anyone listening start acting start take action start LinkedIn. posting mm-hmm. engaging yeah. following the right people stalk people <laughs> <laughs> i i honestly that's how i i love stalking people i stalk shoaib's uh account actually i went down to the bottom of the, his first post oh you and must I... have seen some absolute shit <laughs> <I did>. <laughs> <laughs> and i was like okay yeah i can do that oh there was some absolute yeah but it just shows like if you show up every day and you get better and you commit to improving every single day you'll get there mm. no matter what like there's you're already discarding like 95 percent of people are just on linkedin lurking so if you're doing something every day Mm. people are going to look at you and be like okay this guy knows what they're what what they're doing i love that i love that who um we'll give a shout out to a few people who who do you like on linkedin at the moment what kind of creators are you you everyone i love everyone um my favorite linkedin creators jasmine alec he's a pro copywriter you know i've never spoken to him or or like you messaged him i need to do that he's amazing he's honestly so beautifully amazing and smart and powerful and so giving i love him and his copywriting is incredible so him luke matthews you probably know him mm-hmm. as well he's so the sarcastic Wizard of Martin, right? yeah so sarcastic uh funny and he's inc- incredibly good at what he does um sophie miller obviously she is the queen of everything she inspired me so much to get on this linkedin train with her she stood out so much in like a sea of men in linkedin she stood out to me the most uh, i totally agree like sophie for president i she just needs everything yeah that girl is she's gorgeous and she always like every time every single time i need advice she she gave it to me and i was a nobody like a year ago so kind and i learned so much from her i was like i want to be like that like i want to be kind and give it like her mm. and i think finally i'm getting there but uh, she's definitely someone i try to embody um who else dina i can't really pronounce her name but um dina from authority Mark. yes authority. she's so great she's such a powerful creator her mm. content is so good i i always look at it and i'm just like wow i love people that also like create with conviction right? yes and they don't just like post content for the sake of posting content but they have an opinion and yes. they're willing to to fight for what they believe and what they stand for yeah. to me that earns a lot of respect yeah that that's the thing with personal branding you need to start for something if you stand for nothing you're not going to be anyone to anything mm. so anything to anyone so that's you just have to pick your point and just stick by it and don't be like on the fence of oh maybe this maybe that no choose who you want to be what you want to be known for mm. and go for it and also repetition matters as repetition, well repetition yeah like sharing that message consistently to be known for something right mm. because if you post content and it's all scattered and there's no kind of tactical approach to what you're doing you post so much content that you're, you saturate people's news feeds but they don't know you for anything in particular yes. whereas for you like i know you for growth linkedin growth right and being like a strong oh, yeah. badass entrepreneur so that's the vibe <laughs> you give me and i hope that i'm kind of also known for like personal branding and and diversity and inclusion yeah, and youth entrepreneurship definitely. and those kinds of things which is really important to to because a lot of people say just post just post I I, th- I think it's it's important to take action. Yes. But without the without doing the other bits, it doesn't work. You've got to know why you're posting and have that purpose and intention. I hate that advice when people are like, just post. No, like if you're just posting to post, okay, that's fine. It it kind of works because I get it. It's so simple. Like just yeah. post, just do it. But um, if you're posting just to post without a strategy, without knowing what you want to be known for, without having those subcategories sorted out, like what do you want to be known for, entrepreneur, powerlifter, athlete, um, what else? Like you have to choose that first before you just start mm-hmm. posting. Otherwise, it's going to be directionless. You're going to waste your time and you're going to waste your energy. 
Yeah. So we've talked about creators that we we love. Let's talk about creators that we hate. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> we'll put that in the trailer, and everyone will be like, "Oh my god, they're gonna like bitch about creators." Absolutely not. Um, but I was ready. <laughs> we can we can have that discussion <laughs> after. <laughs> but um, what kind of things do piss you off about the platform and and uh, LinkedIn? But also not just that. Also like youth entrepreneurship. Any kind of things that you have opinions on that are maybe unpopular or go against the mainstream. Okay, give me one of yours and I'll think why. Okay. okay, so for me personally, I think, I mean, just, just a strong opinion that I have and I really believe in is that um, young people are, are being failed in, in, in many ways in, in kind of like the education systems. I know we touched on this before, but I think there's so much um, taboo around apprenticeships and work experience and vocational subjects. And also, I think it's fine to take a step back and not run at 100 miles per hour all the time so so for me like a lot of advice on linkedin right now is when people do this do this do this do this do this to the point where like it's actually paralyzing almost because there's so much advice out there and i think we need to actually allow young people to fi- make mistakes figure stuff out themselves and know that you don't have to compete with other people who are running 100 miles per hour because their destination is completely different where they're going is not where you want to go so you've got to really find that like inner strength and inner purpose and cut out the noise put the blinkers on stick stick to your lane and do what you need to do to get to where you need to be preach (laughs) 100 percent, i couldn't agree more i think i have two um and i might get cancelled for this but um i think self-care it's a scam for a lot of us entrepreneurs. I think the idea that we need to self-care, like take a day off, go to a spa, do this. If I did that in the first year of me getting here, I wouldn't be here. And I'm so tired of like these grown up, incredibly successful entrepreneurs saying that because they they went through burnout, they went through this and like now they regret it. They wish like they took more care of themselves. But I would argue that that's the reason why they're where they are right now so giving that like advice to young people that are thirsty that they want to go out there and get it and be like you need to take care of yourself yes take care of yourself but also you have to work on this business every single day i work 18 hour days sometimes i haven't i don't see my friends i barely leave my room uh sometimes i forget to eat uh sometimes i don't go to the gym but my business is where it is right now because of that and I think hustle culture is amazing I I love it it's giving me so much drive it's giving me so much purpose I'm constantly fired up to do shit every single day and I think we should just let people choose what path they want to be but stop telling people that they need to take care of themselves because people we're not stupid like we know we need to take care of ourselves like yeah have a shower do this but (laughs) you you don't need yoga you don't need a crazy long morning routine you don't need to meditate for two hours in the morning you need to meditate two hours in the evening no just get up do your shit work on everything that you need to then do everything else there you go there you go get up and do your shit (laughs) Um, no i think it's it's a very valid point i also would would say from my own experience i've i've done the exact same thing and i had that moment where i was working crazy hours i was loving the hustle culture and stuff but also like when you're doing that you know you're not going to be doing that tw- like, you know, f- for long term yes, you're exactly. doing that to accelerate your growth in a specific short period of time and you know your boundaries and your you know how much you can stretch yourself yes. out of your comfort zone and there are boundaries and there are moments where you do need to step back and then take care of yourself but if that's the if you, if, if you do want to build something here's here's the reality if you want to build something and build it quick and be successful and have impact then you have to put in the hours and you have to put in the work and you have to make sacrifices elsewhere knowing that in a year's time five years time ten years time you're gonna enjoy your your life because of what you did exactly i think the best thing i could have done for myself was to disappear for six months delete all social media pick one go go crazy obsessed about it repeat it every single day get results show it up on social media that's it but I had to, for, for me to be here, I had to disappear and just mm. nail down, laser focus on what I wanted to be. 
and I've become that. So yeah, it works. That's interesting. So you took six months off. Yeah, I disappeared from social media for six months. And I, what were you doing in that time? I was studying like crazy. I was becoming obsessed with social media marketing, copywriting. I was reading a shit ton of books. I was studying all the big creators. Um, and I was writing every single day, applying it. Social media, especially LinkedIn, is the best way to grow because you get immediate feedback of your work. If people like it, okay, they're like they're liking it, getting more engagement. If people hate it, okay, I need to change this. So, I yeah, disappearing for six months was probably the best thing I could have done for myself. I love that because because what you just said before was taking that step forward when when you're ready to fully attack, but also you know when to take a step back and give yourself that time to learn, to analyze, to be in the right headspace. Yeah. So you can then yeah. go like 100 miles per hour in, in that particular in that moment particular for the sprint. Period, yeah. So it's like, it's like you sprint at times and, and then you take a pause and you have a little walk and yeah. then when you're ready again, you, you've got that energy back, you go again. I like the idea of living life in season. So mm. like, is it on season? Is it off season? Right now I'm like in like a middle season where I'm like still working, but I'm training. I'm studying big creators again to get better. I am mm. studying uh, big entrepreneurs to like see their systems, their uh, SOPs, frameworks, all that that I never thought I had to do. I'm, I'm taking a step back and studying that like crazy. I'm obsessed with it. I'm obsessed with growth right now and I'm just taking that time to be that but like what a month ago I was on sprint zone where I was like doing this doing that getting more clients getting this doing that getting ready getting ready doing it running winning 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 and now I'm like okay now it's time because otherwise I'm gonna burn myself out and that's how you avoid burnout by understanding and being self-aware of your limits and I guess not a lot of people are self-aware enough to know but self-awareness is one of the things that can get you the furthest, just knowing when to go and when to stop. Mm, love that. Oh, that was good. Um, so what, what what's your plans for like the future then? And I know like I personally hate getting asked this question, so sorry in advance for asking it, but um, is do you have like a certain goal in mind, a big ambition that you're trying to get to? Or are you just kind of enjoying the process? And, I think and just like you, I just want to be happy, man. Mm. Should we talk about that? Yeah. So, because we had a discussion just before we we did the, the, we, we start recording, and we talked about how much how there's often so much pressure like put on 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 young people and, and anyone really to you know do more. What's next? Um, wait, where, where are you going to go from here? And actually, I think both of us are so aligned in the sense that our goals we we're not driven by money, we're driven by financial security, but that doesn't necessarily mean making millions, right? But we are driven by happiness. Talk to me about that. I think happiness is so important because I, for me, I didn't have it once. I was living my life in black and white because I was so depressed. And knowing now what color looks like is just divine. And whatever I, I do, I do for the happiness. I don't care about the money. I don't care about the like perceived success or anything. I just want to feel fulfilled and happy. And that's what I do every day. And if maybe one day copywriting and running this agency won't make me happy and I'll happily move on to something that does. Oh, that's so refreshing to hear. Like I was advised by a business coach once to never talk about like me potentially not being in business or not having my business or never talk about failure in my business because this person said that that would um, devalue my, my ability, my skill set, my service and uh, make people want to not work with me and I think it's actually the complete opposite I think we need to embrace vulnerability in business and also just openness I think people will respect transparency I might not be like in my business yellow hippo we might not exist in three years time I might you know something could happen next year where I'm like I, I don't want to do this anymore and that's fine it's okay to not have like a two, five, ten year plan and that plan doesn't need to look like growth as well. I talked on a podcast with Saffron um, from the 20s Legacy, I think, uh, the okay. brand. Um, and I said on that, like, I'm descaling almost my business and that's absolutely fine because like you said, you sprint at times and then you sit back and yeah. you stabilise. And I'm in that stage where I'm really happy with, with where <laughs> I am and I'm able to make that decision where I don't want more money. I'm actually willing to lose some money to regain time and freedom and mm -hmm. genuine self-fulfillment and happiness. And I think it's really important. Not enough people speak about it. So I'm glad you are. I think it's just like we live in such a crazy society where 
the I don't know people before us used to think that business and the nine to five and the rat race were the be on be all end all, but us we're so smart now we have access to all the technology in the world and we are able to choose the path that suits us best as humans because we're humans first we're not employees we're not business owners we are a person a beautiful human being that has diverse needs for everything else mm. and now we're taking the power back and being like look i actually I think I'm going to put myself first. And that's such a shock for so many people. Oh, yeah. how dare you actually prioritize your own well-being because it's my life and I want to live here for as long as I can. I want to be healthy. And if it's not providing me health, mm. I don't want it. And I that's fine. That. And yeah, I remember you just reminded me when somebody said to me like, um, so what are you doing to grow the business? And I was like, nothing. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> I don't know. What are you doing? Yeah, like I don't know. Yeah, literally, what are you doing? I'm I'm not planning to to grow and grow and grow and grow. I'm just like enjoying myself. Just chilling. Right. And I think we have this fixation on like growth. Constant growth. And of Everybody, course at times you want to do that, but there's times yes. where you want to pull back. Everybody we were talking about this earlier, like everybody gives us unsolicited opinions about what should we should be doing with our business, where social media presence, like do this and that. And at one point I got so overwhelmed, I was like, I should be really monetizing this i could be at a million at the end of the year because of this and it's like do i even like why would i want that like it, it that life is not mm. for everyone like this scaling agency life where you're hiring so quickly you're growing so quickly is i don't think it suits me like i'm just like i want peace and people need mm. to understand that not everybody has the same goals in business yeah I completely agree with that completely agree where can people find you if they want to follow you uh, you can find me on LinkedIn, Lara Costa, or Instagram, Lara Costa, or anywhere else, mm -hmm. Lara Costa. There you find me. Wicked. And also, just before we wrap up, we I usually ask, you know, what's a unpopular opinion opinion that might get you cancelled one day? But I feel like you kind of answered that a little bit. I can give you another one. Okay, go for it. Um. Okay. So, I feel like a lot of girls in the industry always seem to box themselves up because they're like, oh, I'm not as good as men. Uh, these, like, the men have an unfair advantage and stuff. And I I do agree to that to an extent, but I think the moment women stop boxing themselves and putting themselves as female founders, female entrepreneurs, female everything, they will start growing because I saw that with myself. I I think the point where you start talking about what you're lacking, you put yourself in a box mm -hmm. and it limits your growth. and you sorry like baby girl you can't fill someone else's cup without having yours full and you can't help another course without helping yourself first so if you want to help feminism if you want to help diversity if you want to help anything help yourself first do what you need to do to be the best version of yourself and then focus on something else I love that. I think that's a really nice way to actually end the podcast. So, uh, Lara, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to listen to Rebel's podcast with me, Shweb Ahmed. If you've been watching us on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you've been listening to us on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, then please give us a five-star rating and a follow. The more successful this podcast gets, the bigger and better guests we can have on in the future. Thank you.